The Invader One. What's up guys, Invader1 here again, and this time with another Resurgence video. This is Resurgence 2.0. For those of you guys that do not know what's going on, uh, we are doing Platinum-based challenges based off of the N7 HQ challenges on your dashboard, on the N7 HQ, on social.bioware.com. And we're going to them. You guys saw the Resurgence 1.0 where we chose to uh, to fight collectors on platinum on hydra with the batarian soldier and strikers so that was a pretty beast of a game it was a lot of fun it was it, it was it wasn't that bad because you know the batarian soldier is already very powerful and we all had like incendiary rounds four and everything we made good use of that challenge now on the tab on the next challenge what we're doing here today at this moment since we can only pick the characters weapons and maps that are on this challenge we went with the next map which we are gonna do firebase condor okay so we are definitely going with firebase condor in this one on the n 7 hq as you can see and we're also gonna be using the batarian sentinel so as you can see here we have the batarian sentinel on this challenge so we're gonna go with that and <laughs> guess what weapon we are going to use because yes we are a bunch of crazy lunatics the kishak harpoon gun since this is one of the few weapons that is on this challenge so for resurgence to that out guys we are going to kick it we're going to wreck it i'm also going to talk about the batarian sentinel build uh it's i'm going to talk a little bit about it into the gameplay but let's get into the gameplay and uh the build is at the end and i want to talk a little bit about that because uh, i am going to be creating a, a a separate build video for the batarian sentinel with a different build that i prefer even more now I gotta tell you, this challenge was a little insane. Uh, first of all, because we are using the Kishak Harpoon Gun, and I want to talk about the Kishak Harpoon Gun a little bit, so you guys can understand it. Now, when the Kishak Harpoon Gun first came out, guys, it, it was actually a beast of a gun. It was actually really, really good, and I'm not saying it's not good anymore. It's still a decent weapon. Uh, the thing is that when it first came out, there were a lot of people using it because just the amount of damage that it would do on a charge was absolutely insane. So a lot of people were rocking that gun in the beginning and just destroying <laughs> destroying primes i mean i saw videos in the beginning before because I, even though i had used the kishak harpoon gun when it first came out i was not rocking it hard like a lot of other people were um i actually did get to watch other like pc player videos where uh you'd really see uh just pc players just destroying uh primes and platinum banshees with the kishak there are a lot of good things about the Kishak Harpoon, and I do like it. Don't get me wrong, I actually do like it. For a long time, I was actually rocking the Kishak Harpoon gun a lot. Like, I was, I became really, really good with it, and um, I just have not used it since then. So I don't know how my gameplay looks in comparison to anybody who really is really expert with the gun. So, But I, I will talk about it a little bit. The Kishak Harpoon gun, again, it, it did get... Um, it, it did get a change, an update at one point, so the, the amount of damage was reduced, I believe. I will have to confirm that, but it's not the same gun. Now, let's let's talk about the Kishak. It's actually labeled as a sniper rifle, so it does have a scope. It, it, you, know, it, you can zoom in just the same way as a sniper rifle. But this gun is one of the few sniper rifles that does not have a hip fire penalty. Okay? So... Let me explain that. What a hip, what a hip fire penalty means that if you charge it and you shoot it without scoping in, you still get the same amount of damage. For other sniper rifles, when you do not zoom in, you do not get the same. You get a penalty. Uh, the damage is reduced. So for the Kishak Harpoon gun, you don't actually have to scope in to get the amount of damage that you want so for example let's say you have a husk in front of you you have a cannibal you have an enemy right in front of you you don't want to zoom in uh, you just you know you already have your crosshair right on the enemy as you know you can just go right ahead and shoot and you're gonna get the, you're not gonna get a damage penalty so that is actually one of the great things about this gun uh, that you don't have that damage penalty and that's a really good thing the other great thing about this gun is that uh, it's that it has a bleed effect 
Okay, and the bleed effect, what that means is that you shoot the Kishok into an enemy, and it's, what you're really shooting, it's a harpoon. It's, I mean, I, I don't know when the Batarians thought that harpoons were, I, I don't know, they, they probably figured that everybody in the battlefield was a whale. I, I really don't understand what happened with the Batarians at that one point. But, you know, the Batarians are beast, they're beast characters, and they're some of the best characters in Mass Effect 3. That's why... I gotta be honest with you, I'm a little surprised that I don't see them all the time, but uh, I think the favorite, most people's favorite, are, is the Batarian Soldier, uh, because he has his Inferno, you know, Inferno Grenades and Ballistic Blades, and he is just the, the beast of a character, I mean, that guy's so tanky, you can, you can do so much with that, the, the Batarian Soldier, um... And the Batarian Sentinel is the same way in the sense of tankiness. Uh, he's got the blade armor, the very, very powerful guy. Uh, his powers are different, but anyways, we'll, we'll, we'll get into it. The Batarians, for some reason, they're crazy, though. The Batarians are absolutely insane. I mean, where do you come up with a Kishok harpoon gun? So the Kishok, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's definitely a Batarian gun. It was used by mercenaries or slavers, etc. And you can actually look at the tooltip, you know, that's on the, um, for the gun, and you, you, you're able to read this. Um, so, you know, and it's, uh, it's funny that the tooltip actually says that, uh, no bastard with a Kishok meets to take you alive. So, yeah, it, you know, I'm pretty sure in real life, if you get a freaking harpoon upside your neck i'm pretty sure you're not going to survive that um and especially if you want to pull that out it's probably going to tear you to shreds it's going to tear you to pieces so anyways the kishak harpoon it's it's kind of like a very nasty gun and what's really awesome guys is that it has some really amazing it it provides some really fun ragdoll effects on the enemies so if you actually charge it up and hit a phantom or hit a cannibal or hit a trooper once it kills them you know that last shot it kind of bounces them off all over the place so that is so funny and hilarious to watch so that's another cool thing about the kishar carpoon gun that the kind of um well, the kind of animation that you get out of the enemies, it's its its, it's some, somewhat insane. Now, I did say a little bit about the bleed effect. So, the bleed effect, what it does is, again, this is a harpoon that you're firing. What it does is you shoot the enemy, and if the enemy still has health, well, it, it continues bleeding the enemy out. The, 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 the enemy will continue bleeding little by little. Now the stats for that is not very clear. It's not on the tooltip. It's it's something that I, I've even tried to look on BSN and um, I, I did find something but it wasn't too cl quite clear so I can't quite tell you for the different difficulties if it matters on different difficulties um, of how much health is being drained or how much how much of the bleed effect is, is really doing enough damage on the different difficulties or if it matters on the difficulties if it's the same across the board uh, for example like you know it might be just it does 10 damage per every three seconds or something like that so i don't know but it does have a bleed effect so it will continue eating the enemy and that's a great thing especially when you pop it on a banshee you do you you pop it on a phantom you know and it's funny that what's funny about this gun is that when you use it you, you know especially the entire team using it you have a whole bunch of like freaking harpoons on the enemy so it looks quite hilarious i mean there's times that i've uh, literally quite placed quite a few harpoons on a banshee's chest and and um also quite a few harpoons on the phantom's head you know it's just absolutely insane so you can do stuff like that and it's it's just crazy and it does have a bleed effect that will continue killing the enemy so if you have to leave for a brief moment that you can go right ahead and do that so what's cool about this gameplay as well is that we're doing some of the things that we saw when you know this dlc came out for the Batarian Sentinel. Um, the Batarian Sentinel on the DLC in the video, what you would see is, you know, people rocking the, the net and then using the Kishaker Punga to kind of snipe the enemy and destroy them. So we're kind of doing that here. Even though this is a challenge, um, we just did the, we just put this together because, well, this is part of the challenge. This is the, the only things that we can use at the moment. Um, well, it, it's, it was still pretty cool to be able to do this kind of game, and uh, it actually worked out. The only thing is, these games are long, guys. This, this is like 28 minutes, because, well, you know, this is a freaking challenge. We're only using harpoon guns, and, you know, we're not allowed to use any other weapons. We're not allowed to use anything else. We can still nuke. We can still use missiles and all that, but, you know, we're specific to Condor. We're specific to this gun. We're specific to this character. So, it, it was pretty cool. Actually, I had a lot of fun doing it. Now, 
Uh, <laughs> so, okay, so... Yes, you will see a lot in the gameplay that I do a lot of hip firing, but then I also do a lot of sniping. I scope in a lot, uh, just because I want to make sure I get the right angle. This gun, when it shoots its um, its harpoon, it kind of it has a little bit of a, a kind of like an arc at at, at some point. So I want to make sure sometimes when I s uh, scope in and I zoom in, I want to make sure that I'm I'm really aiming right at it, or if I'm even if I'm hip firing as well, I'm you know I want to make sure I'm right in the head or right in the body, uh, to get the body shot in there. So it is what it is. So let's talk about the Batarian Sentinel a little bit. I did say in the beginning that I have a more preferred build, and that just means that it, it just means that there are many different builds that you can do with this. Now, for me, a preferred build would be a build that would have Shockwave. Well, we did in this situation since. Um, you know, I want it to be a little bit more tanky. I picked blade armor a specific way. And even on the build at the end, like I said before on the other Resurgence 1.0 video, when you use Batarians on their fitness, and I want to say this before I go into the rest of the build, you always want to go for the melee damage, damage bonuses, okay? For these challenges, I'm going for tankiness and fitness and all that. But you're going to want to go for all the melee damage bonuses, meaning when you go to fitness, Select all the ones at the top on rank 4, 5, and 6. Select melee damage, select martial artists, select melee synergy. This character is already tanky as it is. Um, even if you only spec 3 points into blade armor, this character is very tanky. So that's the, the those are the differences. So I, I don't just want to say, I don't just want you to go to the build video and be like, oh, okay, this build, oh, this is, you know, whatever. I want to tell you that hey guess what I did it for tankiness for this for this challenge but I do recommend to use his melee damage bonus because his melee is one of the most powerful it's not the most powerful it's really really powerful in the game and what's great about it is is like I was saying before and I will say it again uh, for if you guys didn't know this the Batarians when they do their heavy melee since it's so slow it actually you, know, you get a, a damage uh, bon uh, damage reduction bonus. Now I don't know the detail. I don't know if it's 75 to 90 percent. Uh, maybe if you guys, one of you guys, remember or remember those details, you guys can post it on the comment section. But you know, when you do your heavy melee, you do get a damage reduction bonus. So even though you're doing a really slow but very powerful heavy heavy melee, um, you still get a damage reduction bonus. So at least like that, you're not getting dropped in the middle of your uh, melee animation. So that's a good thing. The only thing is that after you finish your melee animation, then you, you know, you, you have to be careful that you don't get dropped. So that's one of those kind of things um, that I want to explain in the sense of um, what you can do with your heavy melee. Now his light melee is a beast, guys. I love his light melee. His light melee. I, I think his light melee is one of the best light melees in the game because it just looks so vicious. Like it, when you do your light melee, he's literally he p literally picks up his gun and slaps the freaking living daylight out of the enemy it's just like ridiculous it's nasty i feel so bad i mean i literally feel bad for the enemy i like i want to send their parents a postcard or something but like i'm sorry that we just beat the crap out of this cannibal you know i like i you know it, it's that vicious it's so freaking vicious so his light melee is also very very powerful this is why i recommend you know the melee damage bonuses on the fitness rank guys and definitely do it especially on the lower difficulties his light melee destroys everything his heavy melee just <laughs> that annihilates all the enemies so that's a great thing about that and you get a, a, a damage a, a melee damage uh, bonus reduction now for blade armor now I will create. I, I'm, I am going to create a different build video for him later on on, on platinum as well, um, because the the reason the reason I was talking about uh, some changes to his build because this build was for tankiness and for this challenge. I and we had one guy who actually specced into shockwave, and I explained that the reason the reason I prefer a build that has shockwave with submission net, um, and I I will reduce the blade armor um, just to have both shockwave and submission net maxed out, is because well. Um, you can do tech bursts, so that is a great thing. You submission that and then shockwave. You could tech burst the enemy. You could detonate. So it does a lot of damage, and it works quite well with the Batarian Sentinel. Um, but I will talk about this specific build here, and uh, and then we will talk about um, 
you know, a build that has Shockwave, and that is one of the reasons why one of one of our buddies has Shockwave, so he will actually detonate Tech Burst, Tech Explosions, um, because we're all using, three of us are using Submission Net, and one of our buddies is using Shockwave and just detonating everything. So that was a good thing. For, now, for this build, though, this specific build, let's say you just want to go with Submission Net, you just want to put enemies in the submission net and they use a gun or sniper rifle or something to kind of mess them up it's a fun build this is a fun build and you could you know even do solos with it as well you could do team games as well and like look at what we're doing here we're having a ton of fun this was fun for me i know that some of the guys here may not, may not like uh one specifically uh you know is always complaining about these challenges but they do it anyways <laughs> so because you guys know i like to do crazy things you know i don't just want to play the game as is i want to do some crazy challenges and things that you know people will find challenging so now the thing is uh, uh, about this is that um well let, let's get into the build now for blade armor uh, normally I'll probably just spec three points into it and um, maybe just reduce some of the passives even though his passives are great so that I can have both shockwave and the net but in this build uh, which again it's 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 still a good build um, I put on um, blade armor the first three ranks and rank four I went for tankiness but what I would recommend okay um, I went for durability here which is really good you get a damage reduction bonus um, I, what I would recommend is actually to go for melee, increased melee damage bonus by 15%. Okay, because even though I just went for durability, because I wasn't sure what was going to happen in this challenge, um, you know, this guy is known for his melee, guys. His melee, melee. I, I, you know, and by the way, forgive me if I'm not saying it the way you guys say it. I, I don't know. I, I, people tell me that I say melee with a little twang or something, so I'll just leave it at that. So now. Melee damage uh, rank four. That's what I would go for in this build. I picked durability only because I wanted a more damage reduction because I wasn't sure how the, this challenge was going to go. But you should be fine with a melee damage bonus and increases it by 15%. So when you're doing your heavy melee, you're doing your light melee. It, it's destructive. So if you create a melee build. Uh, this way, his melee will be absolutely awesome, and you can do it in team games, especially gold, silver, and bronze. His melee will destroy. His melee also does great here on platinum. Rank five, which you always want to go with damage return, guys. The only time you want to go for recharge speed is I don't know. It's very rare you go for recharge speed on lead armor, except uh, if you're using it on the Batarian soldier. Um, because you know you want your uh, you want your ballistic blades to be constant. So I, what I would go for is damage return, increase damage return to targets that melee you by 150 percent. So when they like you get a brute hitting you, uh, you get a phantom trying to do her melee on you. You get you know, any enemy that that has a melee item. A melee attack. Even the little husks, they get <laughs> the damage is returned back to them, which is which is pretty awesome. So it's, it's also increased by 150%. So whatever they're hitting you with and whatever that damage is, it they get it back to them at that increased amount, which is <laughs> freaking awesome. On rank six, I actually went for durability. I recommend durability on blade armor on both. You know, on any build, uh, the power recharge is. I mean, I think. If you're going with the Batarian Soldier and you're just going with Ballistic Blades, then I will go for Power Recharge. And you're not using Inferno Grenades. I don't I don't know why you want that. But still, anyways, it happens. Those builds are... You can do a build like that as well. But for the Batarian Sentinel, I definitely recommend just Durability at the end. That gives you a damage reduction bonus. The way I have it spec'd out here is 40%. Let's say you did not go with Rank 4 Durability and you just went with the Melee Damage. It will still be 35% damage reduction bonus which is great so that means that whatever the enemy damage is doing to you you know you get it, it reduced that whatever damage is by right at the moment 40 percent okay and the way i have it spec'd out i got a melee damage bonus of 25 percent but that would be increased if you actually picked the melee damage bonus on rank four is increased by 15 percent so that would actually be really really amazing guys that will be 40 percent melee damage bonus and the melee damage return with this build is 250 percent so any enemy that is hitting me it's actually 250 percent of whatever that damage is back at them like back in their freaking face so that's a great thing guys now submission net guys submission net is a great power it's a lot of fun um i like it on a lot of the like the smaller enemies the mooks you know the um uh, the soldiers, the the troopers, the the husk, the cannibals. 
the 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 geth i mean it doesn't really do anything on armor targets but what it really does for armor targets it actually gives uh, a little bit of a debuff so let's let's um let's look at it but this really does it incapacitates the enemy it's not like state it's kind of like stasis in a way but it's not exactly like stasis stasis is actually um a power that that kind of works a little bit more consistent than submission that submission that uh, some at times you will have difficulties catching some enemies. Some enemies can't dodge it. Uh, the phantoms at times they when they put up their bubble they they can actually refuse the submission that which is a little disappointing at times. So but the submission that is a great power. So in rank four the way I like to go instead of incapacitate the enemies a little longer I go for damage. It increases it by forty percent. It's actually constantly like hurting the enemy. Rank five instead of damage and slow because. You know, it's actually pretty good. I went for recharge speed on this one, guys. But I definitely recommend damage and slow instead. Um, I only went for recharge speed because of the challenge. And I wanted to constantly, you know, cast submission net. But you're, you're going to want to go with damage and slow instead of the rank that I have on this build. Um, because it increases damage by 40%. And it slows armor targets by 30% for 10 seconds. So there are times that you see me, you see us cast submission net on armor targets. Armor targets are like pyros atlases primes and what it does is it slows them down by 30 percent and and you know it, it's, it's kind of like a you know a little bit of a debuff on the enemy it, it slows down the prime slows down praetorians and it just slows down any any armor target dragoons as well so you can use it on on armor targets and use it that way so it's not it, it's not something crazy when you see somebody using submission that on an armor target all right rank six guys i I like the shield and barrier. Don't get me wrong. Increased damage to shields and barriers by 50%. That's freaking amazing, especially when you catch a phantom and it's just dropping her barriers and all. But the electrical feel is so freaking good, guys. I like it way too much. Like the ele If you choose rank 6 electrical field, it improves the electrified net to deal 251.25 points of damage across 6 meters every 1 second. So every second for six meter radius it is doing 251.25 uh, points of damage every second until the net is destroyed until the net stops okay so that is freaking amazing i the way i have it set up here uh the grapple duration is 7.8 seconds that made that for the enemy is incapacitated for 7.8 seconds if you catch it um I'm sorry. The uh, I'm sorry. The incapacitate duration ha it's 5.2 seconds. So for 5.2 seconds, the enemy is there, incapacitated, and the damage is 1,185. So every time you are casting submission net, this is a lot of damage, guys. So submission net actually does damage. It is actually excellent, and with the electrical field, you you not only did the initial net damage of 1,185, but you're also at the same time doing the, um, you know, it, it had the electrified net. It does 251.25 points of damage. There are times that you would do that a lot. You see a lot of people just shooting the submission net on the ground, just so that it, when enemies or spawns just you know go through the submission net um, they get electrified you don't necessarily need to do that if you go to a spawn you, you need to shoot at the first enemy that there is you it, it catch it, it catches them and all the other enemies are going to be electrified around it anyways so that's that for material forcer guys and this one I, I just actually went for weapon damage power damage on rank 5 and uh, damage and ammo on rank 6 so I could have more weapon damage and spare ammunition uh, so that's pretty much the way to go when it comes to his passives so that's that when it comes to this guys now um, one good thing about having shockwave with him and, it, and this is interesting about the Batarian Sentinel since so th th these Batarians are more like slavers, and you know they're they're out there constantly. Uh, they, they really believe in slavery. Somebody really needs to teach them something about slavery. And, and matter of fact, when you watch, when you play through Mass Effect One and Two and Three, you really read a lot about this. And this, and it's kind of hilarious on uh, uh, Mass Effect uh, Three, where the single player, where they kind of justify uh, slavery to um, you know to the world or whatever, uh, and the, you know. <laughs> they try to justify which is absolutely insane so a lot of their powers and a lot of you know what they are is based upon that you know they really don't they, they they're very vicious they want to kill enemies etc but like for example this battery sentinel you know he wants to incapacitate he uses submission that what he really wants to do is just enslave everything so it's i wouldn't be surprised if 
you know, they try to enslave uh, the Reapers just so that they can have a bigger workforce. Uh, so, anyways, that that's whatever, guys. So now with this uh, with this challenge, what was crazy is that I have to tell you something about the Kid Shock. I'm going to go back to it because I have to tell you something that I I guess I had a little bit of an advantage here with the Kid Shock. Off host Kid Shock can give you a little bit of a trouble, guys. The uh, when you're off host with the Kid Shock harpoon gun, um, there will be times that you will shoot the gun. Uh, and and, and it, this doesn't happen always. There will be times when you shoot the gun, and um, well, that that for whatever reason the uh, the harpoon just you know did not pull out, or it just did not show up. So that may happen sometimes. And the off hose Kishar harpoon gun at times may not hit its target um, at times, and that's not consistent. It's not consistent. It happens here and there, but it's still you know you you will have issues with the. Uh, with with the Kishar harpoon gun at, at times off host, so um, I'm I'm not exactly sure, you know, what is the percentage of the times that that happens. It doesn't really happen a lot. Uh, the guys weren't really complaining about it. They were just saying it, you know, ahead of time. Oh man, off host Kishar, oh that's not good, that's not good. Rah, 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 rah. But at you know at the same time, I just want to make sure I mention it to you guys. And you know, when it comes to by the way, uh, another little recommendation. Um, some of the gear bonuses and stuff that we use here, uh, you, when you use the Kishar Carpoon Gun, it's actually really good to use incendiary rounds, guys. It, it already has a bleed effect, and, and adding and stacking the incendiary rounds, whether it's incendiary rounds 4, 2, 3, 1, whatever you use, is actually a really good thing on this gun because it's, well, you have more of a bleed effect. Uh, you have the bleed effect of, of the gun itself, and at the same time, you have incendiary rounds just constantly burning the enemy. So, that's a little bit of recommendation. So yeah, guys, you know this was this game was actually I don't know because some of the guys were one of the guys was complaining, but everybody was actually okay with this one. Um, I was a little surprised that it went actually a lot smoother than I expected. The uh, the collector run with the Batarian soldiers um, was was pretty smooth as well, but the, um, the 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 extraction got a little crazy, and this one actually wasn't too bad. Like I I expected this one to be a lot harder. Um, the guys really didn't like the fact that the Kishar Harpoon Gun wasn't that great of a gun when we were trying to use it, but, you know, it's still really decent, and you can use other characters, by the way, that can take advantage of the Kishok. Now, some characters that I prefer for the Kishok are characters that can incapacitate enemies, like Stasis. You know, you can definitely use an Asari Vanguard or an Asari Adept. You could also put the Kishok Harpoon Gun on the uh, uh um on the Vorcha engineer and i think i'm gonna do some more gameplay with the Vorcha en engineer guys because that's one character that i kind of like you know judged a little bit in the beginning i wasn't too into him and then he has actually become a really cool character for me like he's actually really decent i i enjoy playing him um i like him he's got that incinerate he's got the you know he's got his net and I you know he's he's actually really good he's actually really good so I I think I'm gonna be rocking him on a few more videos in the future and we also have the challenges guys so yeah this was the resurgence 2.0 challenge uh, maybe you guys can try it I don't know uh, we're gonna continue with these challenges the next one is gonna be a little bit insane but we're just gonna see how far we can get with these challenges so resurgence has one more challenge it's gonna be resurgence 3.0 and then we're gonna go on to the next challenge and go from there guys so some of these are gonna be a little crazy some of these like weapon setups the combinations are just like ridiculous so these were decent. These were decent, even though the Kishak is not that not that great of a gun right now. It's decent on gold, silver, and bronze. On platinum, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. It's just okay. But uh, we do have we did have a lot of fun with it, and um, and just using having the ragdoll effects just affect the enemies. So, but anyways, guys, um, you can see as as well, and I I just want to mention this again. You can see that the amount of damage that we that we're dealing with the. Um, with the submission net, it's actually amazing. Since we have three of us just constantly casting submission net, we're doing a lot of damage on the enemies. And that's what I was saying before, guys. You do over a thousand damage, so you should be casting submission net. Don't, don't just think of it as a power to ca to capture enemies. Also, think of it as a power that does damage. So you can cast it on enemies. You can cast it on anything. You, you have a if you have a setup to slow down armor targets. Well, guess what? They're gonna slow freaking down. So. That's that, guys. So now, 
We're going to move on to the following challenges, and by the way, I'm definitely looking forward to uh, some of the other challenges that I'm uh, that I'm getting involved in, and, and that's that's pretty much it, guys. Um, the build is actually at the end. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Please comment, rate, and subscribe. Uh, it definitely helps me out, and at the same time, um, I look forward to bringing more Mass Effect content and more content with other games as well, and... Um, by the way, guys, hopefully we will have an update soon on Mass Effect 4, and I will be talking about that very, very soon, but um, stay tuned. All right, guys, Invader went out, and this is Resurgence 2.0.